Units need ammunition to attack and defend. Ammunition in the game is represented by supply points. Supply points are carried around by headquarters. The number of supply points a particular headquarters has is shown on the supply track. Every headquarters in the game has a corresponding marker for the supply track. Looking here at the supply track, the German 8th Army headquarters has 22 supply points, while the Russian 1st Army headquarters has 17. When a headquarters expends supply points for units, the player moves the marker on this track to show the expense. In order to attack or defend at full strength, units expend supply points from a nearby headquarter. If they cannot do so, they participate in combat unsupplied, which means they will be at half strength. It costs one supply point to supply four strength points in an attack. It costs one supply point to supply two strength points in a counterattack. The difference is due to the attacker both moving and firing, while the defender is mostly just firing. Let's look at an example we've used before in learning about the basics of combat in the game. In this example, the Germans are attacking the Russians in Hex 2606 with 20 strength points. At a rate of one supply point per four attacking strength points, the Germans would need to expend five supply points from the nearby 8th Army headquarters so that all of the involved units could attack at full strength. There are eight Russian strength points in Hex 2606. At a rate of one supply point for every two counterattacking strength points, the Russian player would need to expend four supply points from the nearby Russian 1st Army headquarters so that all of his units could counterattack at full strength. It is always a player's choice to expend available supply points or not. Just realize that not expending the supply will have the combat strength of the unit. For defending units, this halving is done prior to the doubling or tripling for counterattack. Players can expend supply for some units or just for some strength points and not for the others. The supplied portion would use their full strength while the unsupplied portion would be halved. In this example, Let's say the Germans opted to supply 12 of the attacking strength points by spending 3 supply points. The remaining 8 strength points would then attack unsupplied at half strength. So the Germans in this case would attack with 12 plus 4 for a total effective strength of 16. And 16 is the column they would then use on the combat results table. The path from a unit to its supporting headquarters is called a supply line. The length of the supply line is defined by the number of movement points it would take to move from the unit to the headquarters. Note that supply line length does not include the cost of enemy zones of control it might pass through. There are adverse effects for units with long supply lines. Attacking units must be within four movement points of their headquarters to get the full benefits of being supplied. Defending units, on the other hand, can be up to eight movement points away before suffering any negative effects due to their supply lines being too long. If units are further away from their headquarters than the allowable distance, their strength is reduced for every extra movement point of supply line length. So, if an attacking unit is five movement points away from its supplying headquarters, its strength is reduced by one, even though it has the necessary supplies expended for it. At a distance of six movement points from the headquarter, the attacking unit strength would be reduced by two, and so on. Note that at some point, Units with really long supply lines might as well conduct combat unsupplied. 
Now let's look at an example of the effects of long supply lines. The German units in Hex's 1905 and 1906 are attacking the Russians in Hex 2005. The German units are being supplied by the 8th Army Headquarter in Hex 1507. First, let's look at their supply lines. This is the supply line for the 41st Division in Hex 1905. It's six movement points long. This would be two, three, four, five, and six. And this is the supply line for the units in Hex 1906. Tracing from the unit to the headquarters, it's five movement points long. One, two, three, four, five. Just to point out some issues supply lines may have, I've added a slight complication. I want to point out that you can trace a supply line through a hex in an enemy zone of control only if there is a friendly unit in the hex. So the units in 1906 can trace their supply line through hex 1707 even though this hex is in an enemy zone of control because the 4th Brigade is there. They could not trace the supply line through hex 1607 because there's no friendly unit there to negate the enemy zone of control. So they trace their supply through hex 1606. Note too that the enemy zone of control does not add to the length of the supply line. Now back to the units involved in the combat. The German player decides to fully supply the attack. The attacking German units have a combined strength of 18. To fully supply them, the German would need to expend 5 supply points. The long supply lines of these units now come into play. The unit in 1905 has a 6 movement point long supply line. Due to this, it would only be attacking at strength 6. This is because its supply line is 2 movement points longer than normally allowed, and therefore its effective strength is reduced by two. Each of the units in 1906 have a five movement point supply line. Even though they are fully supplied, each would only attack at strength four. This is because their supply line is one movement point longer than allowed. So the German in this case would actually attack with 14 strength points, not 18, on the combat results table. I want to show you the little secrets to how a wise player manages supplies. To better use his supply points to his advantage, the German player in the example could decide to save a supply point by only supplying the 8-5 in hex 1905 and the combined eight strength points from the two units in 1906. The German player would expend four supply points to supply 16 attacking strength points. The 8-5, the 41st Infantry Division, and four points each from the reserve divisions in 1906. As we've already discussed, the 8-5 in hex 1905, although supplied, will only attack with six strength points due to the length of its supply line. The German player decides to only supply four strength points of each of the 5-5 reserve divisions in hex 1906. Each therefore has one unsupplied strength point. These unsupplied strength points can still participate in the attack but at half strength. Since there are two such unsupplied strength points, combined they provide a single point of actual attack strength. The 5-5s still suffer a penalty for the length of their supply lines. Although the German player only supplies four strength points of each unit, the effective strength of the supplied portions are just three apiece due to the five movement point supply line length. So in this case, with the German player expending four supply points, 
he would have an effective strength of 6 from the unit in 1905, plus 3, plus 3 from the supplied portions of the units in hex 1906, plus one more due to the unsupplied strength points from the 1906 units for a total effective attack strength of 13. Another option could be that the German player could decide to have both of the units in hex 1906 participate in the attack completely unsupplied. In this case, he would only expend two supply points for the unit in hex 1905. This unit, plus the now unsupplied units in 1906, would have a total effective attack strength of 11. I went through all of these options because I wanted to point out how you should wisely use your supply points. There are never enough of them, and I recommend that you always try to get the most out of them.